Hamlin. Bob Poplin, Al Bernstein back at the Station Casino in Kansas City. We move to the featherweights for the introductions. Here's Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Station City, pardon me, from Station Casino here in Kansas City, the action from Top Rank Incorporated and Budweiser continues as we go to the featherweight division. This bout scheduled for 10 rounds. Your three judges are Mike England, Fred Fenston, and L.P. Lane. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, Kevin Champion. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trimmed with gold and weighing in at 126 pounds. From El Paso, Texas, he brings a veteran record of 21 and 10 with one draw, 13 KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, Roberto Torito Villarreal. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue letters, weighing 126 and one half pounds from Central City, Kentucky. He brings an excellent record of 35 victories, 18 by KO, three defeats with three draws. Here is the Kentucky Kid, Clarence Bones Adams. guys have had your instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. I want you to keep your punches up and obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Good luck to both of you. Go back to your corners. 27-year-old Roberto Villarreal fighting out of El Paso, Texas, born in Mexico, coming off a 164-day layoff. Turned pro nine days shy of his 16th birthday, so he does have 32 fights under his belt at the age of 27, but that pales in comparison to the 23-year-old in the white trunks, Clarence Bones Adams, who has 40 pro fights and 212 rounds. That's astonishing. And we mentioned when he was just 19 years old, fought Orlando Canizales, and uh, was TKO'd in the 11th round, but really an excellent effort. And that was when Orlando Canizales really was Orlando Canizales. He was darn good then. Not that he's still not good, but that was during that reign of terror he had over the Bantamweight division. Clarence Bones Adams, 15 of his 17 knockouts have come within the first three rounds. That's 88% out of Central City, Kentucky. But a lackluster affair on the deuce in August in Ohio when we were at the Ohio State Fair a 12 round decision against Mike Juarez for the IBA title and he said that he has been working on sitting down on his punches more with Keith Jackson he says he knows he can box but he has to bring back that power and he feels that he has it I think he can too he's the kind of a guy who I believe has the potential to set down his punches and punch harder. He's never going to be a huge knockout artist, but he already has the skills, and he pointed that out. It's a matter of really making sure every punch counts. You know, we asked him about his power outage, and he said when he started boxing, his father had him working with bigger guys, and you know, he realized he couldn't knock those guys out, so he got into a boxing style. But right now, it's Villarreal with counter right hands that are catching the attention of Bones. Well, Adams staying in there with him and Villarreal happy to exchange. I'm sure he would just as soon have Adams fight that kind of fight because when Bones Adams is more of a boxer, he's very difficult to fight, but it doesn't necessarily make for pleasing matches. We had him also against Kevin Kelly uh, in a draw in Las Vegas that he had in uh, about a year or so ago. And, uh, that one was not a pleasing bout. The lefty style with Adams, it didn't make for an intriguing matchup. Get him up. Good body work by Villarreal. Get him up. You all right? All right, Fox. Yeah, that bout was in Nevada against Kevin Kelly. Not a thrilling affair. All three of Adams' losses came in a row. He had the broken jaw when he was 19 and the TKO loss to Orlando Canizales for the IBF title. Then he suffered a fourth round TKO loss at the hands of Frankie Toledo. And he followed that with a fifth round TKO loss against Jeff Trimble. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that he hurt his shoulder against Toledo. That was the whole reason he lost Toledo. Then he came back too soon against Jeff Trimble. Really wasn't totally himself. And uh, that's how he lost that fight. Final seconds of round one. Clarence Bones Adams and Roberto Villarreal scheduled for 10 on the deuce. Welcome back to the Station Casino in Kansas City, Missouri. Bob Popple along with Al Bernstein. Our second trip here, Al, and this is a fantastic venue. It really is. The Station Casino, great room here in their uh, special event center. And uh, 
it's very conducive to boxing and it's a great casino here as well. We begin round number two of this 10 round featherweight bout between Clarence Bones Adams and Roberto Villarreal. We take a look at numbers in round one, not a sterling round for either man. No, Adams with a slight edge. I ended up giving him the round. Um, he threw a lot more. And there it is, Adams, uh, 10 to 9, winning the first round. Bones has a very good left hook to the body and a double left hook. And he started off using that punch a little bit in this uh, bout. I wonder where the nickname Bones came from. Well, Clarence said when he was a little kid, he was all skin and bones, and bones just stuck. He is one of those guys that uh, all the boxers respect. He's a hard worker um, and just well respected among the boxing fraternity. But everybody knows that he's had some ups and downs during the course of his young career, but he's always tried and uh, always willing to fight whoever they put in front of him. Villarreal, on the other hand, at 21, 10, and 1 with 13 knockouts, has been in against good boxers as well. Suffered a third Watch round TKO now. loss Box. to Kevin Kelly, not the only common opponent back in 92. Was knocked out by Miguel Gonzalez, Gregorio Vargas, and lost a 10 round decision to Jesse Benavidez, and was knocked out by Derek Gaynor. He's, those are all named fighters and all guys that. Uh, really have something to offer and unfortunately he when he's been in uh, those kinds of matches Villarreal has not been able to step up now tonight he thought he was going to be facing Freddie Norwood who is a top rated uh, fighter or waiting a championship match Norwood of course is a left-hander if you if you folks have seen him fight before so clearly Villarreal facing something quite different than he was expecting just tuned in you miss Corey Spinks the son of Former heavyweight champion Leon Spinks win his professional debut with the unanimous decision over Hector Lavillo. In the ring right now, Clarence Bones Adams and Roberto Villarreal in a 10-round featherweight bout. And in our main event, ranked number two by the WBC, featherweight Cesar Soto will score off against Sean Fletcher. That should be really an interesting match. I'm looking forward to that one. Originally, we were supposed to have Mickey Ward and Reggie Green, but an injury ended that main event. But I like the one we have tonight just as much. Frank, come on, honey. Box. Final seconds of round two between Bones Adams and Roberto Villarreal. We begin round number three in this scheduled ten round featherweight bout between Clarence Bones Adams and Roberto Villarreal by Papa along with Al Bernstein from the Station Break, Casino on, in Kansas Break, City, back, Missouri. Back. Take a look at the numbers in round number two. Adams again just edging out of victory. As long as Villarreal throws that many fewer punches, I think he's have a hard time winning these rounds and I have given both to Clarence Adams. Clarence is one of those guys that over the last four or five years here on our show, you feel like he's a regular, somebody that comes back often. And they, we've seen him do exceptionally well. We've seen him have trying times. We've seen him as we see him tonight. Healthy, fit, ready to go, hoping for another new beginning. And be careful what you say about him. Because as he gets closer to us on this side of the ring, Clarence <laughs> told me yesterday at the weigh-in that uh, he will listen if the crowd's not too loud to what you and I, especially you, were saying. And he'll react off that. Better be careful. He might get mad. And you don't want to really give good sound advice at that moment because it's not fair to the other guy. It's no. bones to eat a lap. I promise that if I say something constructive, Mr. Villarreal will get just as many constructive comments. Bruce DeMoss Strauss, the legendary uh, club fighter who they've just made a movie out, and he's, it's out this week, said that he used to constantly stay on the side of the road where we'd be sports casting, so he could hear what we had to say, and he would just spend the whole fight almost laying on the ropes uh, above us. That's probably taking it to extremes. Adams is having a pretty good third round here, using the jab pretty well to get inside and then throwing those beautiful combinations. Villarreal is a good counter punch though. Mm -hmm. 
Roberto Villarreal, a classic example of a guy who has good skills, but just has never been able to beat the really good boxers when he's faced them. Wow. Villarreal and Adams landing some good shots. Villarreal is dangerous off those ropes. You know what Bones Adams does that a lot of fighters forget to do? He's a master fainter. He faints a lot. And that's how he lands a lot of his punches. Get him up. We approach the final 10 seconds of this third round. This bout is scheduled for 10 rounds in the featherweight division. Clarence Bones Adams and Roberto Villarreal will take this time out on ESPN2. The deuce band is marching and we have a college football double.